Hey everyone, and welcome to um, Mission Impact, right? <laughs> Mission Impact. Uh, this is a series called Out with the Old and In with the New. Welcome to 2021. <laughs> Hopefully it's a better year for all of us than 2020 was. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're back. <laughs> And we, we're going to be consistently back in front of you because we want to make sure that everybody is winning in 2021. And the only way to win is to get the right information and not just get the information, because sometimes we are hoarders of information. We want to get it and implement it, right? And then see if it's working and then do our thing again. So today, myself, Daphne, and Ty, we're going to be talking about um, time to shine, because it's your time to shine and your reporting. That is where you show everything that you did that was wonderful in 2020, right? So, hi everyone, my name is Tracy D. Allen. I'm a social um, and enterprise impact strategist with TBA Consulting and with over 20 years of experience. Daphne? I am Daphne Pettis from On Good Ground Strategic Solutions. I am a nonprofit consultant philanthropic advisor, and a social strategist. Ooh, I'm Ty Boom with Ty Boom Enterprises. I am a nonprofit success strategist and a program support <laughs> specialist. And y'all got all this 20 years and so do I. So we like 60 years plus up in this thing. Exactly. <laughs> 60 years or more of experience oh, right in front of you. I know we look good for our age. I know. I know, I know right? <laughs> Okay, so who wants to get started on this topic? Annual reporting. I like to start, right? Oh. I like to start, and I mean, and I think the reason I like to start, you know, right now I'm working with some organizations and we are doing um, reporting for grants, right? And one of the things, this is the end of the year, um, we're trying to make sure that the money was spent like it was supposed to be spent, the goals and objectives were met, and it just kind of got me thinking about organizations as a whole, not just programmatic type um, mm -hmm. of reporting, but how are we showing up and how are we communicating this to our supporters as well as our the population that we serve? How do people know that we're out there? How do they know that we're doing what it is that we say that we're going to do? We're, we're on the, this is 2021 20, almost, and we're getting to start a new administration um you know and everything and y'all know you know things change when administrations change and i'm not gonna say anything about the current one <laughs> you know really but things policy changes funding and funding trends change and a lot of that has to do with how we show up in our businesses and how we show up in our organizations our social enterprises and and how we're showing up is what we're saying how are we what are we reporting what are we telling um, people about um, the services that we're providing. What are we telling them about the impact that we are making, if we are making any at all? So your annual reporting is that time to let folk know how you are doing, what you're doing, um, what kind of difference you you made over the course of the year. And I know this 2020 has been the year of COVID, the year of social unrest, the year of just crazy. I don't even know what to call uh, 2020. Has it been? I don't know. Has it been a year? But whatever that year looked like for you in review, you want to be able to communicate that. And if you are a nonprofit organization or if you're a social enterprise, if you're a for profit business in general, there should have been some ways that you pivoted through 2020 in order to reach some goals, even if you had to comb those goals back, even if you had to readjust, because you're not in a business if you're not accomplishing anything. If you're not making any money, if you're not achieving your goals, if you're not meeting your mission, then you're really not doing what it is you're set out to do. So my thing is nonprofits and you know, with a lot having a lot of clients who had to cut back on outreach and stuff because of, you know, they had to social distance and all this, but yet and still, what did you do? How did you pivot? How did you still reach these goals that these folks gave you money for? You know, you you got you have money. You're doing fundraising or whatever. You're saying that you're serving the population. What did you do? We need to know that, and we need for your annual reporting to give us that information. How did you reach your goals? What is your mission? And tell us how you walk your mission out during this year. Right. 
Exactly. How did you walk your mission out? And that should be clearly displayed on your annual report. There's several sections to the annual <laughs> report that people want to see. And like um, Ty and I did a talk earlier this week on Clubhouse. So if you're not on Clubhouse, you can get on Clubhouse. You need to join us because we're on there three times a week. Okay. Right? <laughs> And yesterday, well, we had an extremely interesting conversation, but we had to go. So, but anyways, but we talked about how your annual report should be visually appealing to the people who are going to be looking at it. So we don't want a report. You're not writing a dissertation. This is not your master's or PhD dissertations, right? <laughs> no, we want it to be colorful. We want it. I should be able to look at your annual report and be like, oh, First of all, I should be like, oh, this is pretty, right? That, that's the first thing. It may sound trivial, but it's so much information that you have to give that you want to be able to give it to people in a way that they can consume it quickly and make quick decisions. When people have to take very long to figure out what it is that you do, what impact you made, they tend not to want to give because it's just too arduous. People are busy, especially people who are going to be funding your organization or potentially donating to your organizations or investing as it would be for social enterprises. They want the information and they want the information as easily absorbable as possible. And yes, as a social enterprise, that's who I deal with most, is social enterprises which are for-profit businesses that have a social cause. Yes, you do need to do an annual report. Yes, you do, because you have that social cost component. So you're getting people to invest in those programs and services that you're supplementing from your own business, as well as their funding to impact the community. You need to let people know how your, the monies were spent. What did you do with those monies and how much impact did you have in which areas and with which group of people? And for those of you who are actually listening to this and probably figuring, I didn't have any money or I didn't get any money from anybody, so I don't have to report it. That is truly false. You actually should. <clears throat> that's the time that you really should do uh, mm -hmm. an annual report because you're looking for those dollars. That's the time that you really should actually focus on uh, getting out the word about what it is that you are doing so that for this year and continued years that you can continue to get those that funding. So for those of you who are listening to this, and the first thing that you thought is that, oh, this doesn't apply to me, it definitely does. Those of you with those starting and emerging nonprofit organizations, this is the time for you to shine. And as I say, and as everybody else said, you know, don't go into this long strategic, you know, report, you know, it's not a dissertation, it's not your master class report, your PhD, or anything like that. As you know, the old saying says, keep it simple stupid but keep it simple but keep it elegant at the same time you know get the word out about what you're doing so you can be funded and so you can be successful exactly yeah. Yeah, keeping it pretty you know i like i like pick the tart um those things are like really not you know nonprofits get a discount on these things canva you mm -hmm. get really really nice presentations it makes me think about um poster presentations when i was in grad school right and the ones that had all these words on it i'm like um uh, we just walking by like, mm -mm, ain't nobody want to see that, right? Because ain't nobody got time to read all this stuff. But if you can get something that's visually, you know, just nice to the eyes, you're like, oh, let me see what this is about. And, you know, have your statistics together um, so that you can present in a really nice way to show people at a glance what it is you're doing. And like Daphne was saying, even if you hadn't gotten any money, this is definitely your time because you're not going to get none. You're not going to get any money if people don't think that you are doing any work, you know, and that's one of the reasons why you're probably slow about getting the money now because you're not able to communicate that you're actually doing work. So if you're not, if, if I don't think you're doing anything, what am I supporting? Right. If I don't think that you're, and, and we see a lot of, and Daphne can attest to this because like youth organizations, there's so many, they're like, yes, I think they're probably the most popular Type of it's a, it's a mission program coming up every day. Yeah. Everybody wants to do what looks like the same thing. A lot mm -hmm. of people aren't doing anything at all, or are they? Are they are? You know, a lot of people are telling me, "Time paying out of my pocket for this," and I'm doing this. You know, whatever. Um, if you are doing the work, there should be some communication regarding that work. You should be able to, you know, put it together in a report to show this is what we did in 2020. That should be. You know, if you haven't met with your board yet, 
if the very first thing you should do going to 2021 is to meet with your board, let them know, catch them up because sometimes we get territorial, especially if we're loan leaders and we're founding CEO, secretary of treasurer. We, you know, sometimes we do all of that right there and we keep it to ourselves, right? You want to get your, your board together at the top of the year and you want to present and then, and, and the annual report is not just for the board, it's for everybody. And Tracy mentioned on our other call, you know, it's for, it's for everybody and it should be public knowledge because everybody needs yeah. to know what you're doing if you want to ask everybody to support you, right? But you pull them together and you present this to them to let them know. And if, when you put it out in the public, you give the public an inside view of what it is you were doing. And then they buy back the curtains. Right. right. It's it's pulling back the curtains, being transparent. Right. Like, people see, like, like my curtains right, right now are open. But people see what's going on. Right. Yeah, and you have, there's nothing to hide. And when people feel right. like you have nothing to hide, they're more more likely to come in and support you because they don't feel like they're hiding anything from them. So this is what that annual report is for. So can we kind of piggyback on some things that we talked about, like elaborate on that? So nothing to hide. Why is there nothing to hide? So I'm going to play devil's advocate throughout this whole thing because these are questions that people are going to have in their minds. And then we're going to get back to Daphne's question, um, comment about even if you didn't make any money, um, you still need to report. So what am I going to report? Like, how is this going to happen, right? So let's talk about that. <laughs> so, okay, so let's start with nothing to hide, the transparency factor. Why is there, why does there need to be transparency? First of all, if you are a social enterprise and you are working for a social cause, social is public. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You the are different is with a social enterprise because you're a for-profit entity, you actually own that entity. But the social cause is still public, right? So you don't have to show your books for your business, but you do need to show the books for the social aspect of your business. I want to make that very, very clear. As a social enterprise, which is a little which is different from a nonprofit, because you are a for profit entity or a hybrid nonprofit, but we're not going to go there. We're just going with the for-profit for now because I don't want to confuse nobody. Right? <laughs> well, I don't want to confuse anybody with it. So we're talking about the social entrepreneurs or the people who actually formulate as a social enterprise. You are a for-profit. You can sell, you can make as much money as you want to make. The sky is the limit. You can make two million, five million. It doesn't matter. But the social aspect of your business, that impact, um, social impact part of your business, is open to the public. They don't necessarily need to know how much money you made in your business, how much you paid yourself, but they do need to know all the monies that went to that social cause and what happened in that portion of your business. So I just want to make that really, really clear for people that are listening. Yeah, and I mean, and that's it because it, it ain't you know you're asking for public support, so they have a right to see it. And and with a nonprofit organization, you definitely it ain't even yours. Period. So it ain't because you don't own it. You don't own it. So it's a publicly owned entity. So the public has the right to go through every line item in your accounting system. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide anything in a nonprofit because if you don't do your own internal audit, and we're going to be talking about that in another session, at the end of the year, the IRS can come in and audit you. What are you going to do then? Right? So, yeah. Transparency is pivotal. And where do you put this report? I talked about that before. Social media, every social media platform that you have your nonprofit or social enterprise on, it needs to go up when it's created. So everyone has the right to peruse it. And then it needs to live in a document, a downloadable PDF on your website. And it should be a tab that says annual reports. So people can go back and peruse your annual reports forever. Okay, and this goes for your 99, um, your 990s, whether it's an N or you know the long form. It doesn't matter because I can go online and just type in your name and look for your 990 and see your line item. This is not private information; it is public information, and it needs to be out there. So now to Daphne's question, right? <laughs> so Daphne said, even if you don't make no money, you need to report. So what am I going to report, Daphne? I didn't make any money. <laughs> Right? What am I going to report, honestly? Like, I mean, I know that's a question that some people are going to have in their minds right now. So let's talk about what they're going to report and how, most of all, they should be pulling this report together. Well, first of all, you know, 
when you're looking at <clears throat> your nonprofit, one of the first things that people want to know is what did you do? Mm-hmm. You know, what did your programs accomplish? And Ty always talks about the impact of and, and your evaluation of your nonprofits. And so that's one of the things that you should have been doing or you should have done um, within this last quarter of the year was to take that time to figure out what did my uh, what have we done in our programs? What have we done as an organization? What did we accomplish? And if you had to pivot uh, in, in 2020, you had to change some things, why not communicate that to uh, everybody and let them know, hey, you know, we started out this way, but this is how we ended up and we kept going, we kept communicating. So those are the, those, those are some things that you uh, should uh, include. Include um, those statistics, you know, what were the changes in your programs from, 20, from 2019 to 2020, you know, put those things on there uh, as well. So it doesn't really have to always be about the dollars and the cents, but it does have to be about the impact and what uh, you are doing as an organization. Right. And what yeah. kind of support did you get? Like what kind of, if you if you were functioning, right. did you right. get new kind of support? Did you get new volunteers? All of that kind of stuff really, really matters because mm-hmm. the, the people who are looking at these reports want to know that you are a sustainable organization. Yes. Come COVID, sleet, snow, hell or high water, <laughs> you, you're still you're you're still sustainable. Mm-hmm. So how did you sustain when 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 this stuff went on? Daphne and I, I mean Tracy and I, we're we're working on something for programs, and one part that we were talking about putting in there was um, disaster preparedness. You know that mm-hmm. kind of. And this is what I'm talking about, disaster at its finest. <laughs> it was, it really was. In 2020, um, mm-hmm. how do you continue? How do you move on? And I know a lot of organizations in 2020, for profit and nonprofit, got these COVID dollars, right? And I, I know that's probably another talk for another day. But mm-hmm. a, a lot of a lot of organizations got COVID monies um, in 2020. The crazy thing to me was that some people got these COVID dollars and I would get inboxes and messages and say, we got this money. How do we how do we spend it? Right. And I'm like, well, did you not tell um, the funder how you were going to spend it before you got the money? So however you told them you were going to spend it, that's how you need to spend the money. Right. But what were those what were those things and how did you use this, these funds? to address the needs of your population or whatever the, the, the funding called for, did you do that? So we right. know that in 2020, probably, you know, a lot of us, the bulk of our funding was probably those COVID dollars. How did we utilize those funds? Did we, would, did we put them in general ops? Did we use them to continue our programs? And if we, whatever we did, what was the success of that? How did that pan out for us? Right, and um, so some people would still ask, because I'm playing devil's advocate, right? So some people would still ask, where am I getting this information from? Well, it's called a an intake form. Every mm-hmm. time you're running a program or a service, you should have an intake form where you're collecting all of the information that you're going to now need to um, do your annual report. And I think that's the first step in the process of why a lot of nonprofit organizations are not um able to do their annual reports because they don't have that first simple step down path they are not tracking the people that they're um they're serving right and we also talked before i think our last conversation was about activities versus programs and because a lot of them are participating in activities and not programs they're not running these um air quotes, programs correctly. Therefore, they have nothing to report at the end of the year because they weren't keeping track of anything. They were just doing things to say that they were doing things. So that is some of the things that we really want you to change come 2020. We want you to get more purposeful about what you're doing and show up like a um, a real business, a professional nonprofit organization that is really here to do the work and create impact within the community. That is our purpose. So any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I just want to sure. grab what you were saying about intake and, you know, data, period. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just, it doesn't stop at intake. There's process, no. 
you know, there, you have to evaluate your outcomes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so caught up in the work of it. And, and I mean, even in our businesses and our, our primary businesses are for-profit businesses, right? Mm -hmm. There's still data points. There's still mm -hmm. things that we have to look at right now. We're all probably doing annual review. Like right, right now, where am I? Where do I need to go? What's go who I need to fire as a client? Cause I'm tired of it. Like, you know, whatever. We all have to do those kinds of things. Right. But if you don't collect data along the way, you're, you, you're lost and there's nothing to report because you, you missed it. You missed your moment to do that. Um, you were saying intake. That's the very first thing. Who's eligible for your services? Are you taking in any? And if you're taking in anybody who may not be eligible for your service, that's probably a reason why you're not reaching your the goals that you're trying to reach because you have serving the wrong people. Right. So yeah. things like that that you have to look into. And when you're doing your reporting, um, figuring out whether or not it matches, whether or not it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if you served so many people, but you still didn't reach your goal or you still didn't accomplish this thing or change this situation or increase this behavior, whatever you're trying to do, you need to look at your intake and you need to. OK, did I even serve the right folk? Like because yeah. did they fit into this program that I'm trying to produce? Because mm -hmm. did nothing come out right, you know. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you know this is the absolute best time to do this, you know, because now you have a 12 month in review, a cap 12 yeah. month to look at it and decide whether or not you, you need to tweak some stuff, change some stuff, kick some folk out, you know, whatever you got to do, you can do that right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Daphne, any last thoughts? Um, I would say my last thought is on the, um, the philanthropic advising uh, component. For those people who are looking to fund nonprofits, your annual report is that thing that they go to. That is one of the first things that I pull uh, for those who are looking to fund uh, nonprofit and social enterprises. And we don't go any further than the IRS website. And your website is one of the things that we, you know, if we have to call you and dig and email, exactly. and, and we're, we're not going to do that. Oh, we may not even have. We don't yeah. have time to do that. You know, mm -hmm. for those of you who were probably looking for those end of the year dollars, uh, mm -hmm. for those who wanted to get rid of money, uh, for those tax write-offs or anything, um, if you didn't have that annual report on, on your on your website, you probably miss out on a lot of dollars. So mm -hmm. um, that's my last um, comment and statement. You know, get that annual, that annual report done and get it where it's visible and accessible to those who are trying to reach you. Yeah, exactly. I think that says it perfectly. Get it done. Make sure it's pretty. Make sure it's easy to understand and all of the pertinent information that everyone needs to know in order to fund your organization is there, clear for them to see. Make sure it's on all of your social media platforms and it lives on your website, easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the annual report. Thank you for joining us today for Mission Impact. This this definitely is part of your mission impact. So you did the work all year. Now you need to put it together so everyone can see it. Um, until next time. Bye. <laughs>